macam Raptors dalam game Dead Synchronicity. So sekarang ni kita ada misi untuk selamatkan si Colin anak si Rod ni kan sebab si Rod ni dia boleh beritahu kita siapa. So ya yeah. sekarang tu adalah misi kita cari drugs untuk selamatkan si Colin. Alright guys kita akan teruskan. So ya yeah. let's go. Wait a minute. Before leaving, I should write down everything important I find out in this notebook. It might come in handy if, as Rod says, I'm one of the blank heads the Great Wade left in its wake. Yeah. Oh, no. Here comes that sensation again. It's like... Floating in a dense liquid, while everything around me is transformed. Good God, I think I'm starting to lose my mind. Mankai, apa itu? Hey, come on! Oh no, it's starting again. It's amazing. Everything's changing. Everything. Everything is mutating, and I haven't even moved. I don't understand. I don't understand anything. Okay. It's the trio of soldiers who guard the camp. And if their expressions are anything to go by, they're as violent and unyielding as the barbed wire surrounding this dump. Where do you think you're going, Rat? No one leaves here without a pass, unless it's with a bullet between the eyes. Yes, and we can take care of that for you if you don't get away from that gate. Come on, stick your neck out. We could use a little entertainment tonight. <laughs> What's the matter, Rat? Cat got your tongue? I think it's best if I get away from the gate. I'm afraid their threats are deadly serious. Sorry guys, I'm not looking for trouble. <laughs> you said that I can only get out of the camp with a pass. Okay. Where can I get one? Only soldiers and moles have passes for entering and leaving the camp. And you don't look like either one of those things. So get lost. Well, sometimes we can make an exception. But only if the person who wants to leave is generous enough. And why exactly do you want to leave the refugee camp? What did you lose on the other side of the fence, rat? I have my reasons and I don't think they're any of your business. Watch your tongue, you son of a bitch, if you want to hold on to it. Don't push your luck. We could blow your head off right here, rat. Try showing a little more respect. Hmm. I just want to help a friend's kid, that's all. <laughs> Heartwarming. Really heartwarming. I got an idea. Why don't you bring your friend and his kid with you? We'd be happy to let all three of you leave. Really? <laughs> of course, Rat. We love target practice. I promise to give you guys a running start. Yeah, we'll give you a few yards start. That would make it more fun. I get the impression I'm talking to two armed psychopaths. Unbelievable. Who put these guys in charge of guarding the camp? I'm afraid it doesn't seem like such a good idea to me anymore. But thanks for the suggestion. So, I've heard things are better in the city. Is that true? Yeah, it could be. But that's none of your business. What do you care? If you're gonna die in this dump anyway. Get the idea of leaving right out of your head. There's no place for rats like you on the other side of the fence. Unless you want to take a walk in Suicide Park. Do you want to become a dark star, rat? Now quit bothering us and get lost. But why are you calling me rat? Who's in charge here? Well, 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 did you hear that? It looks like we have a new kid on the block. Let me ask you something. If you people living in this camp crawl around in garbage, build your houses out of garbage, and eat garbage, what else are we going to call you? We're in charge here. The ones with the rifles. That's the only rule you need to know. See all those dark stains on the wall next to the barbed wire? 
Yes, I see them. They're the guts and brains of rats like you who forgot the golden rule. We call it the wall of shame. We're in charge here. That's pretty easy to grasp, isn't it? But sometimes one of you forgets. And that gives us some more motivation to make you better students. So, how's your memory? My memory? That's funny. In another context, that would be an amusing question, but there's nothing amusing about these animals. My memory works well enough to remember who's in charge here. Don't worry. You catch on fast, right? That's a good thing. Now get out of here. Nice motorcycle. It is, isn't it? It's ours. So get anywhere near it, and you'll end up against that wall. You don't have the authority to touch it, or point at it, or even look at it. Dare to touch it with your grubby hands, and you're a dead man. I guarantee it. Got it? Okay, understood. I won't bother you anymore. Get lost! Bangkai. Jahat juga dorang. Ah, come on. Oh no. Here comes that sensation again. It's like floating in a dense liquid while everything around me is transformed. Good God. I think I'm starting to lose my mind. So yeah. Dorang namo selepas kita. Jahat juga dorang. Hello, Mr. Sleepyhead. Excuse me? What did you call me? You're Mr. Sleepyhead. I saw you sleeping in Colin's trailer. I'm so glad you're awake now. I wasn't asleep. I was sick for a long time in that trailer. No, you weren't sick. You were sleeping like a big brown bear, Sir Sleepyhead. Sometimes I used to watch you sleeping in Rod's house and you would grunt in your sleep like a bear. A great big lazy bear, Mr. Sleepyhead. But I'm glad you're awake now. I like your voice. You sound like a knight in a fairy tale. Mr. Sleepyhead? No, that's not my name. I'm Michael. No, you're just trying to fool me. You're Mr. Sleepyhead. My name is Rose. There's something odd about this girl's behavior. It's true that she's very young, but she talks like a little girl. Nice to meet you, Rose. So, do you know Rod and Colin too? Of course. I go over to their house a lot. Well, when they let me out of the van, that is. Rod and his wife have been very nice to me. Sometimes they let me play with Colin. We're very good friends. Are you a friend of Rod's and Colin's too, Mr. Sleepyhead? Yes, I'm friends with them too. Do you want me to tell you a secret, Mr. Sleepyhead? Of course. I have your old clothes. The ones you were wearing when Rod and his wife found you. I have them in the van. They were going to throw them away, but they gave them to me to wrap my baby in. It'll be cold now that winter's coming. Your baby? You have a baby, Rose? Yes, I have a baby. But he's not with me right now. He got lost. Have you seen him? Do you know where he is? I have another secret to tell you, Mr. Sleepyhead. Back in the van, Rose. Now. Move your ass. Get in there. Another secret? Okay. Just a minute. Wait. Get in that van, Rose. It's a very important secret, Mr. Sleepyhead. Something about you. Something about before the great wave. But first I have to find my baby. Have you seen him? Come on, Rose, you heard me. You don't want to get us mad now, do you? I have to go. Goodbye, Mr. Sleepyhead. Okay, you go. She's obviously mentally ill. She's just a little girl in a grown-up's body. And you? If you want to go in there with her, you gotta pay like everybody else. What? Hey, you guys. You talking to us? Let me into the van. I just want to talk to Rose for a few minutes. Of course, it's none of our business what you want to do with her. 
But if you go into the van, you gotta pay the price. Got any money on you? No, I don't have any on me. Then come back when you do and quit bothering us. We have a very busy schedule, you know? The girl said something about a secret involving me. Something from before the Great Wave. It seemed important. But what is it? Maybe it was a product of her madness. But I need to talk to her inside that van to get some answers. I'll come back with the money. Now that sounds much better. I see that we're starting to speak the same language. That poor girl's not right in the head. She acts like a little girl. How can you people be so unscrupulous? Rose is an adult. She's earning a living. Like we're all trying to in this camp. Mind your own business, pal. You're abusing a poor, disturbed girl. Us? Taking advantage of Rose? Us? You want to insult us? We're giving her room and board. She's got nothing to complain about. But she's got to work. That's the only thing we ask of her in return. That's the way things work now. Bring us the money, then you can get in the van with her. Hey, do us a favor and spare us all that sanctimonious crap from the old world, pal. Don't waste our time. Hmm, bankai juga. Another camp inhabitant. He seems quite elderly. What's he doing here all by himself? Hello. Hello, son. Would you like to get a little closer to the fire? Thanks, mister. This is a rather isolated part of the camp. What are you doing here? Well, I'm waiting. That's all. Just waiting. You're waiting? And what is it you're waiting for exactly? Nothing in particular. The usual, for the fire to go out, for sunrise, for it to get cold again. I'm waiting for something to change, or for everything to stay as it is. I'm just waiting. You're too young to understand. It's starting to get cold. Where's your tent, or your trailer? Yes, I had a tent once. They issued me one when I decided to enter the refugee camp after the Great Wave. The trailer was out of the question. They went to the families with the best contacts. Ah, you know how it is. Even in purgatory, some people are more equal than others. You say that you decided to enter the camp. Does that mean that people weren't forced to come here? No, oh, no. Of course not. Why would they have to force us? The catastrophe hit the city hard. Those of us who had lost our homes were invited to come here. In principle, it was temporary, just until the authorities got the situation under control and started rebuilding. We used to have food, water, and a place to sleep. But now it's more like a prison camp than a refugee center. What happened? I don't really know. I guess something went wrong. The new house and the promises never got built. And in the end, the army seized control of the camp. The food ran out, and then the water supply. Nobody bothered to replace them. Seems like our lives didn't matter anymore. I see. In time, things in here started to get very ugly. There were riots, uprisings, and the army decided to close the gates of the camp without any notice. One day, they decided that no one could enter or leave here. Well, actually, people still could. Um, enter, that is. Now, this is where anyone who gets in the way in the city ends up. Or anyone they don't know what to do with. So, this has turned into something like a concentration camp? That's right, son. That's exactly what it is. You know, it's funny. I remember when my father told us about the war in Europe. About all the persecution, the deportations, those overcrowded cattle cars. That all sounded to us like an old movie, an old horror movie. And look at us now. I guess some things never change. They just stop being visible for long enough for us to forget about them. And where's your tent now? Uh, it was stolen from me a while back. 
They fetch a good price on the black market now. Stolen? But how could anyone... <laughs> you seem to be new in the camp, am I right? These things happen nowadays. It's best to take things as they come. The reality of the new world is very simple, son. The soldiers and the moles do whatever they like on this side of the fence. And the hunter and his men run the black market and all the dirty rackets. I suggest you memorize all this. The hunter? I've exchanged a few words with him, but I hardly know him. Yes. The man who protected me during all the shooting. He seems like someone with good connections and some answers. Could he know anything about the drug for treating the dissolved? Do you know where I can find him? You can find him in those barracks at the back. That's his, well, let's say it's his logistics office. Now, the hunter is very dangerous. Watch your step around him and his men. I happened to meet his father when he was young. Ah, oh, he was a violent, degenerate son of a bitch. A real asshole. Now I'm afraid his son has followed in his footsteps. Let's talk about something else. So tell me, is there any way to get out of the camp? Oh, I'm sorry, son. The only way to get out of this camp is to know someone important who can pull strings for you. Or to become a camp mole. Those traitorous scumbags have gate passes. Hmm. I see. I'm not surprised you want to get out of this shit, though. You've no doubt got something to do or someone to find out there. Well, they say things are better in the city. That there's order and that things are starting to function again. But who knows? Well, at least they have Reverend Blake and the consolation of Suicide Park. Suicide Park? What's that? No, just a song that drifts into the refugee camp from the other side of the fence now and then. And the first dark stars come out to hang from the sky. We could sit and count them together, you and I, when the sun departs from Suicide Park. I'm sure you still have some hopes, some dreams. I'm afraid you're just too young to understand it. Who's Reverend Blake? He's a preacher and sometimes comes from the city to bring us a little comfort. Now, some people make jokes about him, but many of us believe that he's a prophet. You should hear him speak sometime. His words etch themselves deeply into your soul. That's why he has so many followers inside and outside the camp. And what was the extent of the Great Wave's impact? How are things beyond the city? Truth is, I couldn't tell you. In the first days, the chaos was so overwhelming that no one worried about anything beyond their own backyard. We victims were disoriented, cut off from the world. And then I came into the camp and well, news from far off places doesn't reach this prison. I'm afraid you'd have to leave here to get the answer to that question. I should be going on my way. Have a pleasant wait, mister. Okay guys, saya akan berhenti sini. Jangan lupa like dan subscribe dengan saya, Shamroy Tours out.